Hello there and welcome to the news at four with me, Sabena Izuku. Unknown gunmen have reportedly taken away the Emir of Bukuyukum in Zamfara State from his palace late on Friday. The whereabouts of the Emir is still unknown, but the State Commissioner for Information, Ibrahim Magaji, who confirmed the abduction of the Emir, says investigation is on by security agents to unravel the identity of those behind his abduction and secure his release. We'll bring you more on this in a subsequent bulletin. And away from that, the security operators have arrested the wife of a suspected Boko Haram leader after a raid on a house in Kaduna Metropolis. They also recovered a number of arms and ammunition from the suspect's home. The raid was carried out by a combined team of soldiers and state security personnel on Thursday night at Rafindadi in Guza, a densely populated area. The suspected Boko Haram leader, identified as Mohammed May Bornu, was said to have escaped, but eyewitnesses confirmed to Court TV News that his wife was taken into custody. And away from that, President Goodluck Jonathan says he was not desperate to continue in office in spite of his sustained campaign for a second term. This, he insisted, is why he is not bothered by things that had been said or written about him in recent times. Jonathan spoke at a public lunch of a book, The People's Choice, the story of President, President Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja. The president, Jonathan, who noted that the book provides a near-accurate narrative of his life story, promised to write the most accurate one after leaving office. Meanwhile, the organizers of the book lunch said the event has nothing to do with politics, even though it is coming just over a week to the presidential elections. They claimed that the timing of the biography was just coincidental. This book had been in production for about one and a half years. The process of producing a book, for me, this is the first time I, I was involved in coordinating the publication of a book, and it took one and a half years uh, to get this book produced. Uh, the timing is, has to do with the production, and when the book was ready, it's just a coincidence, it's coming at this time. And for me, it's the right time that the book is coming at this time. Somebody asked a question now, you are recording. Um, a lot of people have come to realize that we have a president who is compassionate, 
who has feelings for fellow Nigerians and who has committed his entire life to serve this country, to pursue the well-being and welfare of the Nigerian people. A president who is passionate about education, a man who realizes that it is only by educating the Nigerian people that they will also have the opportunity of leading this country. The umbrella body of the Igbos in northern Nigeria has expressed its resolve to back the candidacy of the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Mohamedou Buhari. This is contrary to the position of the mainstream Igbo social culture group, Ohanize Indibu, which is supporting the re election bid of President Goodluck Jonathan. The leadership of Igbo Delegates Assembly were at the APC presidential campaign headquarters in Abuja to declare support for Buhari. We are here to say to you, sir, that Nigeria is better than any individual. We are here as a people who have contributed so much to the social economic development of Nigeria to say that it's easier for us to work with you it's better for us to work with you because of what you stand for. Because we want to live the environment better than we met it. And we want posterity to be better. The All Progressive Congress has advised the people of Southeast Nigeria against putting all its egg in one political basket. This, according to party chairman John Odige Oyegu, is because the region has not uh, had not enough benefit to justify its long-standing support for the People's Democratic Party. He said this in Abuja while commending the Igbo Delegates Assembly for endorsing the APC presidential candidate. <laughs> Nobody travels and settles the length and breadth of this country unless it believes in the nationhood of that country. <laughs> and you have all planted yourselves in every single corner of this nation. So the survival of this nation, the prosperity of this nation, must be of concern to all of you. For 16 years, the PDP has been in office. What we have learned from that is that they have taken the nation for granted. For 16 years, the Igbos have almost 90% supported the PDP. You have been taken for granted. Because I don't know which of you here can name things that have specially come to you because of 16 years of loyalty. You have put yourself in a position where they will say, ah, Ndigo, don't worry, they will be with us, it doesn't matter. They will come to us while are confusing them to come and bribe us to support them. They don't need to bribe. They don't need to do anything for you. You are already there. So why are you playing that kind of politics? Look at the Southwest. Southwest is 60-40. Why must the Igbo nation be 95-5? Why? Why is your bargaining power? So when the PDP wants funds for campaign, they will go and give PDP one billion. But they do come to us to and give us 250,000, 250 million. That is the kind of politics that we want the Igbo race to. Please, please, please don't put your eggs all in one basket.
The Independent Democrats has denounced claims of alliance with the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Mohamed Buhari. The party said this in reaction to a report in national newspaper that included the Independent Democrats as one of the 13 political parties that has agreed to back the APC presidential candidate. The Independent Democrats said in a statement issued by its national director of operations, Chidi Ike, that it stands on its position of adopting President Goodluck Jonathan as presidential candidate. Ike noted the party had on December 11, 2014, adopted President Goodluck Jonathan at a national convention monitored by Independent National Electric Commission. The Lagos State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party, uh, PDP, hosted the party's governorship candidate, Jimmy Agbaje, on Friday at dinner to honor him. The event was a roll call of party chieftains and supporters. Oluwashe Adugoke was at the event and filed in this report. It was an affair of dignitaries from across board, all under the ages of the People's Democratic Party, to dine with the party's governorship candidate, Jimmy Agbaje. The chairman of the party in Lagos, Tunji Shele, says the party is happy to have Jimmy Agbaje as their candidate and that he is the right choice any day and any time. The that I know is a discipline man. And that's why I'm not Tell me what you will not do. Politics or no politics, it will tell you exactly what it can do and what it cannot do. Chairman of the fundraising committee, Leke Adifala, corroborates the party chairman. The real change has been equally recognized for his commitment to the principles of good governance. Man of the moment, Jimmy Agbaje says the people of Lagos would not be disappointed if elected. I believe that I can make a significant difference, a significant difference in making Lagos, in making Lagos more sustainably com competitive and livable. We can no longer continue to take the tab of a mega city just on the basis of population, we need to address the issue of competitiveness and improve quality of life for Lagosians. party, however, urged the people of Lagos to ensure they collect their PVCs and vote for the PDP at all levels in the March 28 and April 11 elections coming in less than two weeks. Oluwashe Yadigugi, Court TV News, Lagos. If you're just joining us, you're watching Court TV News on the R at 4. We'll take a short break and when we return, there'll be more stories for you. Don't go away. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr. Welcome back to the news. For more information, you can reach us on our social media platform, and that's on facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. And on our Twitter handle, at Court TV News NG. For news updates and other focus, you can stream us live on youtube.com forward slash Court TV Love Space and the news. The People's Democratic Party says the All Progressive Congress has questions to answer on the operations of an illegal radio station called Radio Changi. 
Spokesman for the PDP presidential campaign, Council Femi Fani Kayode, said at the news conference that the opposition plans to use the station to announce false results after the elections. He added that APC also intends to use radio stations to incite its supporters to violence. We believe that we have been vindicated on the report we gave to you just two days ago about the existence of Radio Chanji. This is despite the denials and the lies of the All Progressive Congress about the true situation of things and about their dastardly intentions and sinister plots to use the station for nefarious purposes. The fact that the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation only yesterday has confirmed that this radio station exists, that it is possible that its operations are being conducted from outside the country, and that the operations have been ongoing for a while, albeit in a very low-key manner, gives us even more cause for concern than we had before. Once again, we wish to point out the dangers of this radio station and the evil intention of those behind it. Apart from anything else, they wish to use the station to announce false results after the upcoming elections are conducted. That is the primary and more obvious intention and motive. There is, however, a less obvious motive and intention, and it is as follows. We believe that it is only after the APC has been defeated in the presidential elections that the secondary purpose of the station will manifest. The truth is that they intend to use it to create division, chaos and strife in Nigeria by propagating the most irresponsible form of mendacious citations and inciting falsehood and provocative pro propaganda. They also intend to use it to incite their supporters to kill. Once again, we call on the authorities to investigate, question, and arrest the people behind it before it is too late and before all hell breaks loose. Now let's go all the way to Ibadan. Uh, where barely eight days to the 2015 general elections, another group with the name Odudua Frontliners has urged youths to safeguard their future by voting for the PDP presidential candidate, President Goodluck Jonathan. Well, President Jonathan for another term, that's the second term. Ondo State Governor Olusha Gumimiko says the achievements of Good Luck Jonathan in the education sector and the youth empowerment speaks volume of a leader who is interested in the nation's future. He stressed that Buhari has nothing to offer the Nigerian youth because his past government did nothing to support the growing Nigerian generation. Amotai Law witnessed the post-national conference summit for youths in the Asian city of Ibadan and filed in this report. With a chat to map out a great future for themselves, these youths have been sensitized with reasons why they should vote for a Jonathan government in the forthcoming presidential poll. Speakers at the event say a Buhari-led government has nothing to offer Nigerians, stating that a party that boycotted the national conference has no good plan for the nation. Student representatives from selected tertiary institutions in the country who participated in the summit say they are better informed on what they stand to gain from a Jonathan led administration having been presented with much information. The better option from what I heard today is Dr. Goodluck Billy Jonathan. The agenda for, for the youth is really good. So we are hoping they implement it. Undo State Governor Olushego Mimiko says the other correct by Buhari in the country cannot be forgotten in a hurry 
and as such should not be given a chance against the incumbent president who has done so much for the country. In terms of educational qualification, in terms of deep understanding of running a modern economy, and in terms of disposition towards liberal democratic ethos, where is analog? The stage for who emerges the precedence in the elections has been set for the candidate who can present the better argument. Omotayualo, Core TV News, Ibadan. And over to Abuja, where fuel scarcity has once again returned, as long queues are noticeable in almost all petrol stations across the federal capital territory. This is less than a month after the federal government and independent oil marketers resolved issues that led to the fuel scarcity in the country. Some motorists who spoke to Court TV News in the nation's capital said the situation has caused panic buying among the residents. Basil Okafor has more in this report and is presented from our studio. It is another season of long field queues in the FCT. Attempts made by our news crew to speak with one of the station managers proved abortive. But these motorists who have spent hours searching for the scarce commodities say, it is abnormal in a country that prides itself as an oil producing nation. It's a, it's a terrible situation. You understand? I've been on the queue for more than three hours now. Instead of me to just come in and buy within 10 minutes. So they should try and do something about it. Uh, in not less than two weeks, we are experiencing this thing. Also, the same this week. We don't even know the outcome of it. And we just come out yesterday and see the queue, long queue everywhere. You understand? As a president of this country, you have to take a major as, uh, accurate aspect to know who behind this thing to tackle it. As, uh, you understand? And what we are facing, that is not how it happens in other countries. We have this fuel and we are not seeing it. As the situation begins to bite harder, those who depend on fuel for their daily income are complaining of wasting man hours in search of the product. This is our matter, and it's just like a, just be like a woman that just finished uh, cooking her food. And later on, sleep with your hungry. How, how, how do you feel? So you can't enjoy the, the situation of the family. So that's how the, the thing just is. So we are, not, we are not enjoying at all. Though I spend uh, barely 20 minutes now, uh, 30 minutes rather, please. I, I spend barely 30 minutes now. And uh, this place is still better than some of the, uh, the filling stations around the central area. But the basic thing there is that I am a journalist too. I have to take the pain to leave my office to come and keep for four. Because when you look at the cost of the black market, it's about 2,000, 5,000, 3,000, 5 per 4, 10 liters. 10 I cannot take my car to anywhere. There are, however, speculations which tally with the position of security agencies on the actual cost of the latest round of shortage. I wouldn't know the cost. But they are saying that uh, they, would, they don't want people to carry fuel about during the election. The lines are getting longer going into the weekend, and this is in spite of assurances from the authorities of no cause for concern. And outside Nigeria, two extremist gunmen who killed 21 people at a museum in Tunis trained in neighboring Libya before carrying out the deadly attack, a top Tunisian security official said. Wednesday's attack at the National Bardo Museum killed 21 people, 17 of them cruise ship tourists, before the two gunmen were killed in a firefight with security forces. The attack of such magnitude in Tunisia, the only country to emerge from 2011 Arab Spring uprising, with a functioning democracy raised concerns about the spread of extremism to the rest of North Africa. Rafik Chili, Interior Ministry top security official, said the attackers had slipped out of Tunisia in December and received weapons training in Libya before returning home. The Islamic State group based in Iraq and Syria has claimed responsibility for the Bardo attack. Several well-armed groups in Libya, which borders Tunisia, have pledged their allegiance to Islamic State. And that's the news at 4. Do join us at the top of the hour for more. I am Sabena Izoku, and thank you very much indeed for watching.